Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, this week's video, I'm going to be making a retractable train platform. And this is in conjunction with Built by Newkirk. He has all kinds of interesting designs. I have done a lot of projects with him in the past. And you might want to check his website out at builtbynewkirk.com. The idea of this is a train track platform that is approximately six feet wide and about 10 feet long. The client is retired and wants to actively uh, work with his HO scale trains and has no room. So this train track platform is going to be remotely raised up into the roof rafters when it's not in use and then remotely lowered down uh, when it is in use. Now this is going to be probably two, maybe three part video. It's going to be long. So let's get started on this week's video. All right, so the first thing I realized I needed to do is to extend the welding table in some way, sort, or fashion. Uh, the piece that we're going to be working on here is going to be um, 10 foot by 6 foot. In case the outer ring right here is going to be, um, you know, 10 six by 6 six, and so I had to extend it, and that's the only thing I could think about doing at the time. All right, so we're going to be operating uh, using some one inch by three inch rectangular tubing here. This is 063 wall thickness, which is about a 16th of an inch. I'm trying to keep this thing as lightweight as I possibly can, but as strong as you can. And, and I think that the, this is uh, going to be the key for that. All right, so like I mentioned, this thing is going to be uh, about two inches bigger in diameter all the way around. Um, then the initial table itself the table is 10 foot by six foot so this is six six by ten six and it's just going to give us a few inches all the way around the table i'm just cleaning up the edges with the uh, with a flap disc right there and then i'm going to start mounting everything down just use my uh, table dogs to get everything nice and square now this works pretty good this is the biggest piece of uh of material that I've had to square up on my table and I uh, just got multiple clamps down there and I uh, get everything tightened up and she's good to go so I'll be putting a weld on both inside and outside and all the way around all four corners right here and then uh, you see I'm just kind of grinding the surface off right there ultimately this thing's going to be flipped around and I want to be have it flat and you can see this is the first thing that I, I, I saw that could be a potential problem. Yes, it works out on the table for what I've got there, but man, I have to have it bounce right on that inch and a half uh, square tube. And I don't know, and one little bump, and I'm afraid that uh, that's going to be a problem. I've got quite a bit of work that's going to be going in, going on here over the next uh, you know week or two, and I don't know how well that's going to work. I may have to be doing something different. Yeah, you can see it's already moving around and that that's uh, gonna po probably po pose a problem after get all the welding down and just uh, finishing up the uh, you know grinding and this is just gonna be on the outside uh, I want everything nice and smooth ultimately it's just gonna be a painted gloss black and there it is you see that uh, I couldn't stand myself I had to quickly fabricate a, a more permanent style of uh, extension to the welding table that was going to work for me and that's what i did i, I do have a video on that uh that uh, build um i should say a video about that build i didn't film much of it but uh, talked about it all right so with the outer ring um done and out of the way it is now time to start working on the frame itself and uh, basically we're using the same material this is one by three rectangular tube 063 wall thickness again and uh, again the dimensions of this is 10 foot uh, by six foot here um, i'm cutting two at a time just because uh, i thought i'd give it a try uh, they're not the same length once i got those cut i flipped it around and then actually cut them individually uh, one at a time to to get the uh, to get the exact uh, dimension that i needed no problem cutting everything with the Mercer, Mercer Steel Thunder. Uh, that thing just, just eats its way right through this material. So far, so good with this blade. I haven't had uh, uh, too many issues and got hundreds, if not thousands, of cuts on. All right, and then just deburn it with a flap disc here. 
you know a little bit too big to get on the Burr King so this is just another optional way to do it and it worked out um, the way I was hoping there all right just getting everything fastened down operating off the HTP Pro Pulse uh, 220 MTS here and I'm gonna be running about somewhere between 180 and 200 inches a minute and I'm running 35 thousandths wire I'm running 90 10 gas but at about 20 25 CFH there yeah you can see it's a little bit easier to maneuver with the, the table extension I got going on there not quite sure what I'm going to do with it after this project is over. It's kind of big and cumbersome. It kind of, I hate to get rid of it because it looks like I may be using it down the road for something else. So I don't know. I'll figure it out. Store it on the side of my garage or something. No, I'm not really sure, certain yet. But for this project, uh, this is going to be a key. This is going to be an ongoing project for a couple weeks here. Got everything all tacked together right here and then just checking for square just to be sure that uh, we are running in the right path and we are. Well, it's uh, nice and square and then I'm just going to start the uh, process all the way around. You might see me using a number uh, of different styles of gloves from Black Stallion. They offer up all different types of gloves and different styles and uh, you know for, for different purposes MIG, TIG, stick, and uh, general purpose gloves like I'm using here. Uh, they're very comfortable, very durable. I love working with them. Uh, they, they fit me perfectly and they work well for me. I love the soft leather and the, and the soft material. Bonded your, your hand and uh, really good. All right, with the, uh, with the frame itself uh, put together, now it's time to work on the in interior uh, part of it. And I've got a lot of bracing that's got to go on. Um, this is some inch and a half square tube. Um, this is a 063 wall thickness as well. Again, trying to keep it as lightweight as possible. You can see there's a lot going on here. So this bracing that goes across in both directions uh, is going to keep the outer frame nice and square and uh, not uh, not cause any warpage. Plus, it's going to provide some anchoring for the legs assembly that I'm going to have in this a little bit later on. Just like that, those are in place. That's quite a bit of welding that's going to be taking place right here. Uh, you know, we're going to get, I'm going to get all three sides of all, all joints right here. And uh, that's just quite a bit. Now you might be able to see my uh, MIG gun holder there in the background. And, uh, you know, that, that works out really good for, for me in a situation, a situation like this, my welding table. Um, and I also have, uh, you know, angle grinder and take torch. You can find those on my website at jimbosgarage.com. Couldn't quite reach across to the center right here, so I had to get up on my get up on my table. A little bit hard on on my knees. Uh, you know, I'm an older guy, and uh, it's a little bit difficult to work this way. But sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. I I couldn't reach over the table to to see what I was doing, so I got to do it from up on top here. You see, I'm wearing some sleeves. You know, it's pretty hot here in Southern California, and uh, it is summertime. And I've got the, uh, these sleeves work pretty good for me. You know, I do have several jackets. Those work great as well, but uh, uh, just putting these uh, uh, flame resistant sleeves on uh, makes, me, makes it easier for me to maneuver around and it's not quite as hot. It serves its purpose, does, does a good job. All right, with uh, all the welding done, um, I'm just going to go along and I'm just going to grind the welds off of the center part right here. I've got the other stuff that's going to be going on in there and uh, I need to have that as flat as I possibly can. All right, with that all out of the way, it's time for the leg assembly. And uh, there's quite a bit of process to this right here. Um, this is some, uh, you know, some inch and a half by quarter inch flat bar stock. And what I'm having to do is create a, a type of, of, uh, of hinge. This is, what's, this is what the base part of the leg assembly is going to rotate on. You'll see more about that as we go along here and have a better understanding for it. 
the six pieces I need right here and I need to get them in the center and I need to bore out a hole that's just about a couple thou bigger than the tubing itself and as you can see I'm still working off the old 42 Atlas uh, you know since then I've replaced it and got a new Kent lathe 1340 um, uh, but uh, in this video right here this is the last project that I did with the old 42 Atlas and uh, she served me well for for parts like this I've done a lot of little little things uh, <clears throat> and bigger things with it but uh, it was time to move on this was the last project that I did basically what I'm doing is, is just boring this out to like I said a couple thou over an inch uh, inch and a quarter that I believe that's the diameter of the pipe and then these things are going to slide on and I'm going to get these welded to the frame and that's going to be able to have the uh, the tube itself rotate and that's going to be part of the the hinge uh, assembly here. So with the drilling it out with just a regular half inch drill, I was able to get a little boring tool in there and then finish the uh, finish the bore. Now it took a couple times for me to get it right. You know, I uh, I didn't want to make any mistakes. I didn't want to go. Uh, I didn't want to take too much. So it was uh, critical that I just took my time and just took a couple thou each time and uh, got the got the in got that uh, board just the right size i knew i was getting close right there there we go that's a nice tight fit yeah i got these little deburring tools i've had them for a long time man they work perfect for this right here you can see that you just run this thing around the outside perimeter and it just it just gobbles the those burrs right off and gives you a nice smooth finish I got them at my metal supply store. You probably can get them on Amazon. I don't know, but uh, they're pretty inexpensive. I've got like three or four of them now. Every time I go in there, there's a, they got a thing of them sitting right on the counter, and I can't help myself. I got to buy one, one of each color. All right, just round off the edges right there with the uh, Burr King. And there's all six pieces, and this is the way they're going to work. Got three on either side, and I'm just going to pull them right to the very end right there. And for now, I'm just tacking them into place. And then that rotates. And you can see that's how that's going to work. And I'll be welding my legs to that. And that's what's going to be moving. The, I'll be able to move those up and down. Kind of clean. You know, nothing too complicated. But uh, I think that's going to work out pretty good. Just a little bit of adjustment here on this centerpiece. Just trying to get it uh, as straight as I can to be sure that uh, it's going to be uh, rotating smoothly. All right, so once I got those done and everything is working good, it's time for the leg assembly. And you can see I've got my um, my tube notcher right here. This is, I believe, is from JD Squared. Uh, I bought this several years ago for one particular project. I, I paid a lot of money for it, but it is well since paid for itself. By uh, since then, I've used it for several projects. It uh, cuts uh, notches and all kinds of diameter tubing. And uh, I've been really pleased with it. Just took it over the Burr King, kind of cleaned things up a little bit. All right, so this here is, again, some inch and a quarter, a solid bar stock. And I'm cutting four pieces about a quarter of an inch thick. And the idea for this right here is for me to weld them onto the bottom of the legs. I'm going to drill and tap uh, a 3 8 uh, hole in the bottom and that's going to allow for some adjustable legs uh, these adjustable um, screws if you will are 3 8 in diameter about three inches long they got a really hard rubber surface on the end so with this uh, drilled and tapped and welded onto the bottom uh, these going to have about three inches of, of fluctuation just in case the surface that it's going to be sitting on is not level uh, when he does retract it down uh, into position. Uh, he can just adjust those legs. It's going to be going in the same position every time, and the table will end up being um, perfectly level on the, on the area he's going to be using it. A little bit challenging for me doing this on the 42 Atlas. You might be able to see it's not perfectly in there running true, uh, but for what I'm using it for and what I'm doing here, um, this is going to work out all right. All right, so there it is. I'm just uh, tapping those out. That's a uh, Starrett uh, 91B, I believe, tap wrench. And uh, get the right size bolt. 
there it is and that screws in there that'll work just fine I just repeated that with the rest of them and there they are now I'm just I'm TIG welding these onto the end why I don't know just because I can you know I could have MIG welded them all the way around because I I ultimately thought that uh, if I TIG weld these things all the way around that I was gonna not not grind the surface off I just wanted to have a nice clean weld right there but ultimately didn't happen I ended up grinding them smooth anyway um, but it gives me a chance to, uh, you know, try out the different processes, and that's what I enjoy doing. You know, if you just MIG weld everything all the time, um, that's fine. But uh, I like to, uh, you know, try my skills at all the different processes. Uh, you know, MIG, TIG, stick, um, flux core. I like to do everything if I can. It gives me a chance to work off the brand new HCP Invertig 313 AC DC. I've had this for a couple of months now and I haven't got a lot of use in it. I got it coupled with the uh, HTP Arctic Chill uh, water cooler. And uh, <clears throat> so far I've had no complaints. This thing's work works really nice. Probably going to be doing a more in-depth video. I got a pretty good size aluminum project coming up here soon. So um, maybe we'll uh, more action with that machine later. All right. So now it's time to install these legs. And so I've got these fab locks right here from CertiFlat and I've got these things cranked down on the table and then the table's flat. And I know that uh, the base of my table I'm building is flat and then I'm just got them clank, uh, clamped down at a 90 degrees. And then I'm just gonna tack these in place right now. Be sure everything is gonna work the way it's supposed to and so far so good i like it and i want to get everything and i'll just get as much of the welding done here as i possibly can all right so this is the cross piece that's going in there and you know i'm not very experienced with notching and uh that's got to be right on the money you know if you cut it too short uh, you know it's no good you cut it too long i guess you can continue to cut it shorter but i'm just trying to hit the right angle right here and uh, i gave it a shot and uh, it worked out it worked out good the first time I was able to just drop it right in there and the dimensions were were good and once again just tacking everything where it needs to be and that worked it's working pretty good all right we got all that done both sides are done and now it's time for the hinge assembly now this is something that uh, the designer built by Newkirk designed. Uh, I didn't design this. This is something that he came up with, provided me some drawings, and uh, I'm able to uh, recreate this and make this happen. You know, everything's custom. You can't buy something like this that's going to fit this size. You know, this is uh, you know, stuff like this is probably available, but not this size or not this uh, thickness. You know, this is definitely built for this project right here. Yeah, it's just getting a few holes drilled in and get them uh, countersunk. I just like to deburr them. You know, I keep that uh, Dewalt right there, and it's got this uh, countersink bit on it, and I use it for just deburring just about everything I I, I drill out. Just just knocks those burrs off, and it's just a, a tool that just sits sits on my shelf always with this bit in it. All right, here's something too that uh, that I came up with. You know. We didn't want to use uh, bolt heads in here because we didn't have the room because they're going to be closing really tight with each other. So I just got some quarter inch round dowel stock and uh, welded a washer on and we're gonna, I'm going to grind this thing down here a little bit and it's going to provide a nice tight, tight fit. Uh, it's going to allow the hinges to come close, to close together uh, fairly tight without inter interruption. Yeah, it works pretty good. And then another washer on the other side, and it's a, it's a nice tight fit. All right, so now I need to make a, uh, a locking assembly. Now, this is some tube that uh, I've got to modify. You know, I've got to shorten it down a little bit. And it's going to slide over the hinge and ultimately lock it in the, in the open position so it doesn't overextend itself. A little bit of custom work right here to uh, get it to the size I need. And the finishing touches, just uh, rounding over the edges, cleaning up everything, be sure nothing's gonna be uh, sharp. And then this is a little stop. So when the hinge opens up, it stops and doesn't overextend. And then I've got another stop here at the end, and that's going to uh, 
stop the slide piece when it hinges open and it's just going to slide down against that and provide a stop. Now this right here is the other side of the hinge assembly. It's a little bit different, very similar. But since it's kind of being a, a one-man operation on this, this is what it's designed to do. Uh, this, this thing right here is for the other side that it'll stop it from overextending the hinge on that side. A little bit different design. Basically the same except this one right here is going to get sliced. Um, I'm going to take a 45 off of each corner right here. And I'm just going to do that uh, with the Burr King. That's going to get a hole in it. And then that's where those two hinge pieces will come together. And then when it is fully extended, it, it won't allow it to go past that fully extended uh, stage. Same thing with the uh, dowel pin and the washer. That worked out pretty good for us. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. All right, so it's time to assembly, put everything on, see how this thing works. Hopefully it works uh, as planned. You can see that that slides open. Now remember the table is upside down, so everything is working upside down. If the table's right side up, gravity is gonna drop those pins into place and close them. All right, there it goes, just like that. All right, that part of it's done, and I'm afraid that's about all I have time for today in this video. Stay tuned for part two, where we're going to be doing a little bit of the undercarriage part of the table, which is going to involve some electrical boxes and some electrical um, hookups uh, where all the electronics and stuff are going to go. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. And like always, support us at jimbosgarage.com. See you guys on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.